Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ar. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum, Rahmatullah. Sheikh, we'll be discussing uh, homes and the importance of paying homes. We looked at the different categories. We even discussed the, on inheritance and mahar if homes is uh, obligatory or not. I have a question for you, a little controversial. When we have income, and it is a mix of halal and haram money. So for example, maybe there's a, a corner shop or a grocery store, they serve alcohol or haram meat. This person has now decided that you know, he wants to pay homes. Uh, maybe he stopped selling the alcohol and the haram meat as well. But from his income, we've got a mix of halal money and haram as well. What is that person supposed to do with the money? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. The second category in which the khumus becomes wajib on is the wealth or the money which is halal but mixed with the haram. And the example you've mentioned, if somebody was selling mixed haram and halal products and items in his shop or company. In this case, if somebody falls into such a situation and he wants to start paying hummus and he's got the wealth in which is mixed and he doesn't know how much is it, you know, it's mixed with the haram. Halal is mixed with the haram. He doesn't know how much the haram is exactly. It's all mixed. It's all in one, one account. In this case, he should pay uh, hummus on the sum of the profit or the money uh, he, he gained and he made and of course uh, the rest of the wealth inshallah will be halal after after paying the hummus on the total amount gained from these two uh, sources of income the halal and the haram which he doesn't know so if they pay the hummus on such uh, money then it becomes halal inshallah Sheikhna, nowadays, um, you know, with, with people with, with money, they like to invest. They like to invest in stocks and shares, sometimes invest in the bank. And this is with um, usually like um, um, interest rates. Uh, are we supposed to pay homes on, on, on such investments as well? Especially if they become very, very profitable. Well, those who wish to participate in such trade, i.e., you know, selling, buying shares, and so forth. And with regard to uh, considering the, the interest, for example, in this case, such people should initially ask permission from, the, from their marja, the hakim al-shara, so they can actually uh, involve and engage in such trade, number one. And number two, whatever they gain as profit, they have to pay khumus for, of course. So that's the issue, that they have to pay hummus, uh, there's no way they can get away with it. But they need a prior permission from uh, the jurist. Sheikhna, being a bit tricky here, a bit, a bit sly, and trying to work with loopholes, can a Muslim sell halal products and or haram products alongside halal products, and then use um, homes to purify the whole money so let's say i've got you know i'm making very good money on let's say alcohol sales i decide that i want to sell halal meat as well and and other halal products and the profits that i make i pay homes on it and it purifies all of the money can i get away with this well it is not permissible you're not allowed to um, trade in, in such items and products and they must stop trading in such uh, items, such as alcohol and pork meat. It is haram. So um, with regard to um, the income or the profits made out of these haram sellings and, and, and trade, 
this profit and money will become what is known as madalim uh, or radimadalim. Radimadalim means wealth in which has no owners. Radimadalim. So there are no owners for this money because you cannot own uh, alcohol or pork meat. They're haram to be used and, and trade with. So the money gained uh, should be paid to uh, the Hakim Shara, the Marja, so they can pay it to those who are in need, but not in the means of Khums, in the sense of Khums, um, in a different title. So you cannot trade, you cannot sell uh, alcohol or buy alcohol for selling them and so forth. It's a haram, it's a forbidden act. You're committing a sin every day, every minute, when somebody comes and buys that haram product. And it's not counted. You cannot pay homes on such thing. Mm -hmm. It goes somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It goes as to, let's say, like, like a charity. And it goes to, as Rad Madalim as mentioned. Um, it doesn't go and fulfills the payment of homes. So the best thing is to avoid such trade and business. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will sustain the one who is engaged in halal trade and halal buying and selling. So, Sheikh, what happens when someone has halal money and haram money mixed together and this person has spent all the money before even paying khums on it? What happens in such a situation? In such cases, the one should go to uh, the marja or, or the, the jurist he follows and he should reach an agreement with him as they say musalaha, a settlement with regard to the payment of hummus. Mm. So if that settlement is achieved and, and, and agreed upon, then that's fine. I think it's really important that people really uh, take hummus lightly that this money actually belongs to the Imam of the time and you're kind of like stealing from him if you're not uh, you know, paying your hummus. It's, exactly. it's a very, very serious matter. MashaAllah. Shaykhna, I mean, uh, <laughs> growing up, we always used to read stories in regards to pirates and, and treasure and, and treasure hunting. I don't think we find much treasure these days, but it has happened where people find bag filled with money or they, they dig uh, in their garden and they find artifacts which are worth a lot of money, gold coins and, and, so, and so forth. On these treasures and treasure troves, um, are we obliged to play, pay homes on those? What if they're not ours? What if they belong to somebody else? With regard to the tr treasures found uh, in the ground or as the Sayyid mentions, um, in a mountain or in a wall that is known to be as a treasure, and the land in which you found that tre treasure doesn't belong to anyone. So you're, let's say, in a nowhere land, in a mountain that doesn't belong to somebody. If you found such a treasure, of course, uh, there's a homos for it. You have to pay the homos, and the rest is yours. So. You cannot just, uh, because you found it, mm -hmm. you can own it, everything inside that box or that bag. You pay the hummus and the rest becomes halal and yours. As long as they don't belong to anybody else. Mm, so that's the most important that's thing. important, yes. Is to make sure that, you know, it's not on someone else's land and most likely they have a right to it, not you. But if they don't, if it's on if it's in a, you know, a land where it's free, then make sure you pay your khums on it and then enjoy the money. Exactly. Maybe donate to Imam Hussein TV. Exactly. Sheikhna, let's move our conversation forward now in terms of how to pay khums. And you were discussing that you're supposed to pick a particular day uh, and throughout the whole, throughout the year, when that day comes, you pay khums on that day. However, what happens if I've got a product I bought a week before um, the day? Or let's say I, my khums day is tomorrow. I bought uh, a hat or gloves or a jacket the day before. I haven't used the item yet because I've just bought it. I haven't even taken it out of the bag. The next day comes and it's time to pay my homes. So is it a yearly date where I have to pay homes or is it that I have to wait for one year on the actual product or item or property before I pay homes on it? Well, there's two ways to pay homes. There's the easy way and there's a difficult way. There's a common way and there's, uh, there's a less common way. Uh, the common and the easy way is to set a day in the year, as I've mentioned previously, 
the first day of the month of Ramadan, for example, uh, the tenth day of Muharram, I don't know, whatever date you can, you can choose uh, to remind you of the hummus, maybe occasions, the holy or the sad occasions, for example, to mm -hmm. remind you of uh, the hummus date due. And uh, from by setting that day, the fiscal year, then it becomes wajib on you to pay the hummus when you reach that due date. And as I've said, you calculate whatever is left over and surplus of your annual income, and you pay the 20% the hummus uh, of that amount. The second difficult way, or less common way, is to pay hummus without, of course, setting a day in, in the year, is to pay hummus on everything you get, uh, you possess immediately. So you buy this book, you have to pay a hummus for, for that book. As you mentioned, you bought the hat, you have to pay the hummus on that hat immediately. Okay. So the good and the advantage of having uh, a date set uh, for every year is that you can be rest assured and relax for the rest of the year. And when it comes that particular due date, you calculate and then you pay the hummus uh, of the surplus and the remaining amount. Mashallah. I think that's a lot easier for everyone else. I don't think people are quite happy to pay hummus straight away as soon as they buy an item. We pay enough tax as it is. Um, Sheikhna, um, how does a person set a date for the beginning of the financial year uh, in order to pay khums on his wealth? As mentioned just recently that um, you have to choose a Hijri calendar year. Uh, so um, a day in the Islamic calendar, let's say Rabi' al-Awwal, Rabi' al-Thani, the month of Ramadan, Safar, Muharram, Dhul Hijjah, Dhul Qa'dah, whatever date you wish, a month you choose, a day you choose, you set that date, and uh, which is the start of the fiscal year. So you choose that date, you stick to it, and every year when it comes the due date, you start to calculate and you take out the hummus of that, not only money, uh, but in overall uh, assets you own, whatever you have, you have not used. Mm -hmm. uh, you haven't used them during the year. As I've said, you haven't wore the clothes in which you bought them, for example. The gifts, you haven't used them, for example. They just left for the whole year without use. So whatever is left over, you haven't used them, spent them, then you have to pay a hummus. Sheikhna, if someone is unemployed, they don't have any money. And maybe they receive money once, twice, three times a year. Large, large sums of money to help them. Are they obliged to pay khums on that? Well, as I've mentioned, that they have to set a day in the year in which they can start paying khums. So when they have set that date and they reach that due date, then they have to start paying khums from that particular date in the year, in the Hijri calendar. So they must pay the hummus, but they have to initially set the date so they can uh, manage their uh, payment of hummus by calculating whatever is left over from uh, the past year. Excellent. Sheikhna, if a person pays for the expenses of others, uh, is he or she obliged to specify a fiscal year start date for himself in order to pay the khums on the surplus to his requirements? Yes, of course, it's ob obligatory and wajib. Um, the one might be um, the son or the daughter living with their parents, for example, and they're getting money from the uh, father, for example, or, or, or mother, mm -hmm. or from the cousins, or from the uncles, and so forth. That money which is gained, it's a gain, isn't it? Yes. It's a gain. And it's left, uh, let's say, they put the money in the account, in the savings, mm. or in the cupboard, for example, and they leave it for the whole year. They plan to go holiday or buy something, or for their uh, future expenses in university, for example. They must pay the hummus for this leftover money in the bank or in the cupboard, uh, or in drawers, for example. They left it for... Uh, a whole year, for example, they haven't spent it. They have to pay hummus. It doesn't matter to be the son or the daughter or mm -hmm. uh, the grandson. 
and, and you got the money from your parents or grandparents. You still have to pay the hummus when you meet the due date by the end of the year. Whatever is left over, you pay the hummus. Whatever you spend, you spend. It's yours. <laughs> if you spend the money, you know, sometimes you get the Eid. Yeah. And the Eid, you get the uh, idea or yes. the, uh, the gift from your family and friends mm -hmm. on the Eid day. Yes. You spend it, that's fine. It's yours. Mm -hmm. halas. But if the due date comes and you haven't spent them, then you have to take out 20% hummus, one-fifth of the remaining amount. Ahsent, ahsent. Sheikh, now, in regards to the date of homes, is it possible to change the date? Is it possible to delay it just in case I need a bit more time to organize my finances? Well, initially you must ask permission from the marja you follow that they would, if they allow you to change the date to bring it forward or backward, that is why you have to ask the marja himself uh, or his representatives uh, to see if they allow and mostly they allow, of course, you, you can change by their permission, of course. Ahsan, thank you very much, Sheikhna. And thank you to all our viewers for joining us on Ihqam SOS. Inshallah, we'll have more discussion on Khums on our next episode. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh.